This video is brought to you by MathGalaxy.com and we're going to be looking at the arithmetic uh, SAT math topic number properties. The concepts tested under number properties include integers and digits, consecutive integers, properties of odd, even numbers, adding them, multiplying them, negative numbers, prime numbers, factors, divisors, multiples, properties of zero, rounding, and remainers. And the problems we identified on the 10 practice tests in the SAT official guide, the blue book put out by the College Board, indicate that these problems are ones that the main concept being tested is number properties. And the notation here is that three practice test one this is section three problem eleven and section seven problem ten and so on and the r indicates that it's a remainder problem p indicates it's a prime number problem and the number symbol indicates it's one that you can test with specific numbers Let's start by getting an overview of some of these topics. Integers are what you think of as a whole number. So negative 325 is an integer. Digits are the numbers 0 to 9. So this is an integer composed of three digits. The units are one's digit is 5, then the tens digit is 2, and the hundredths digit is 3. Consecutive integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, or it could be negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. Consecutive even integers could be 2, 4, 6, 8, or negative 8, negative 6, negative 4, negative 2. Consecutive odd integers could be 1, 3, 5, 7, or negative 9, negative 7, negative 5. Prime numbers, 0, 1, and negative numbers aren't considered prime because one of the main purposes of prime numbers is to break larger numbers down into components and they don't do that. So 2 is the lowest prime number and the only even prime number and you should have these memorized. Rules for adding even and odds. An even plus an even equals an even. And if you're not sure, think of a specific example. So 2 plus 4 equals 6. An odd plus an odd is an even. So for example, 3 plus 5 equals 8. You can think of an odd as an even plus one. So you have an extra one here, an extra one here, so the pair makes it even. And what the SAT often is testing is the exception. And in this case is the only way you're going to, you're going to get an odd sum is if one of the numbers is even and one is odd. Because you have an extra one there. Okay. Rules for multiplying, uh, an even times an even equals an even. An even times an odd is also an even. Because you think of, you're sort of taking the one here and doubling it. Uh, and again, the exception is the only way you're going to get an odd product is if all the multipliers are odd. So you have, say, 3 times 5 equals 15. So you could have a thousand odd numbers multiplied together. The product is still going to be odd. You put in one even number, and no matter how many odd numbers there are, it's going to be even. Now, properties of zero. Zero times any number is zero. Zero divided by a number is zero. But you can't divide by zero. That's undefined. Uh, 
And the kind of places we'll I'll test that, which we'll get more into algebra, is particularly, let's say, if you have, say, x over x minus 2. Where is that undefined? Well, anything that makes the denominator 0 makes it undefined. So x is equal to 2. Or if you have, say, x over x squared minus 16. So what values of x make this undefined? Plus 4 and minus 4. Another way they could ask the question is, for how many values of x is this undefined? How many means you're just counting things that meet the condition. How many values of x makes this undefined? That's 2. Okay. And sign numbers, order of operations. We're, we're not going to review all of high school math, but areas where people tend to make mistakes is something like this. By the order of operations, PEMDAS, parentheses is done first, then exponents, then multiplication, division, and addition and subtraction always done last. So here you do parentheses first, then multiply it by 2, then do the subtraction. Common mistake is to subtract 2 from 10, which would be wrong. Okay, some points about calculators. Say if you're dividing, to take a simple example, 12 plus 8 divided by 2 plus 2. So that's 20 over 4, which is equal to 5. But if you put in a calculator like this, what's going to happen? The calculator gives division priority over addition and subtraction, so it'll do that first, which is not what you want. So if you have more than one thing in a numerator denominator, you want to put all of the numerator in parentheses and all of the denominator in parentheses. It doesn't hurt to put in extra parentheses, but it could hurt to leave it out. Let's look at some examples of how the SAT tests these concepts. You may want to pause the screen and work on them yourself before we go through the explanation. So if you want to, you can pause it now. If x plus 5 over 2 is an integer, then x must be. Okay. Must means always. So if it isn't always true, it's not a must. So you want to be looking for exceptions. Must it be a positive integer and still meet this condition? Well, let's try to disprove that. What if it's a negative integer? Okay, so negative 1 plus 5 is 4 divided by 2 is 2. It's an integer, and it disproves that it must be a positive integer. Now, must it be a negative integer? Well, we'll just try to disprove that with the positive integers. Say 1 plus 5 over 2, 6 over 2, which is equal to 3. So it's not a must that it has to be negative. Must it be even? Well, negative 1 and 1 disprove that. Must it be odd? Well, we have two examples where it's odd. So that looks like a possibility. Must it be a multiple of 2? Well, how about 4 plus 5 over 2? Well, 9 over 2, 4.5. But the numbers, to be a test of the question, the numbers have to meet the conditions for the question. And this doesn't meet the condition for the question, so it's not a test of the then part. So it looks like odd would be our choice. And what concept are they testing here? Well, it's even and odd. So if this is odd, you have an extra one here, and an extra one here. So the only way it can be divisible by 2 is if this sum is even. So you have a 1 here, so this has to have an extra 1 here and be odd. Next, consecutive integers. So here, the sum of 5 consecutive integers is 225. What is the greatest of these? Well, you could do a guess and check, but one way they distinguish between low and high scores 
is that on easier problems, lower scores may take more time on them, so don't have the extra time to spend on harder problems. So if you could find an easier way, th that will give you more time on harder problems. But if you did this algebraically, you'd have x, then plus x plus 1, plus x plus 2, plus x plus 3, plus x plus 4, is equal to 225, which if you're not comfortable with algebra, it may take some time. Okay. Well, one way I like to do these is think if you had five, so you're adding five numbers. Have to meet two conditions. They have to sum to 225 and they have to be consecutive. Well, let's see, what if they were all alike? That would meet the sum condition, 225. Five fours are 20. Okay, so if each was f 45, we'd meet the sum condition. Okay, so let's see. Now, how do we make these consecutive? Well, you want to start in the middle. So that's 45. We go up on this one and down on this one. And then once you get the middle ones, well, it's obvious what the others are. This one goes up by 2 to 47. This goes down by 2 to 43. So the greatest of these is 47. And always take an extra second to make sure you're giving them exactly what they want. Sometimes you're so happy that you solved for x, but you forget to notice that they want what is x squared. Okay. Now what if there are four uh, consecutive integers? So in this case, they sum to 178. OK, well, what if uh, they were all equal? Eighteen, four fours are 16, 2. 44.5. So now, how do we make all of these consecutive? Okay, well, you're getting sort in the middle, but there are two in the middle. So you up this one by a half and lower this by a half, and so on. And once you get that, it's obvious what the other ones are. This one goes up by one and a half, so it's 46. This goes down by one and a half, 43. So what's the least? 43. That's the end of this review from MathGalaxy.com. But there's no substitute for tackling the problems on your own. And these are problems in the SAT Blue Book where you could practice number property problems. So you may want to save a few of these tests for ones that y you could do as complete tests, but then the others are ones where you could review the individual concepts. So thank you for listening and good luck.